Good morning ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between. Today we're flying on board Philippine Air Asia from Guangzhou, China down to Manila. Because after reviewing Thai Air Asia and Air Asia X, it's now time to take a closer look at the Filipino affiliate of the Malaysian low cost airline. But almost getting scammed at the airport. But you you don't work here, right? We walk here, see this is someone map. Being sent to a factory instead of the departure location and dealing with a red eye delay, this flight was everything but usual. Our Philippine Air Asia adventure begins in the capital of China's Guangdong province, Guangzhou. The city, with a metropolitan region comprising some 32 million inhabitants, is situated upon the Pearl River Delta. It stands as one of the world's foremost industrial, technical and commercial hubs and is thus often referred to as the factory of the world. Before we head to the airport, we find ourselves strolling through the seamlessly endless streets like majestic valleys nestled between towering buildings. There is a remarkable stillness as all the traffic is electric with only the occasional horn breaking the quiet. Immaculate, tropical and entirely unique. At times I have to remind myself that this isn't Singapore. Our flight is an overnight journey and as dusk gracefully settles over the city, we prepare to depart. We await our private chauffeur who shall whisk us off in a Rolls Royce straight from the city center to the airport. And I'm just fucking with you, we're taking the metro. Public transport in Guangzhou is certainly a different experience from what one might be used to. A one-way metro ticket from the city center to Guangzhou airport costs 5 yuan, which is about 0.7 USD. Quite overpriced if you consider the utter lack of typical nuisances, no flickering light, no rodents, no graffiti, no junkies screaming at you, and not even the slightest smell of piss. Indeed, Guangzhou's public transport system is remarkably refined with new trains, pristine infrastructure and an impressive punctuality rate of 99.5%, something that most other cities around the globe couldn't even dream of. However, it can become rather overcrowded during peak hours. Also, if you're like me, tall, handsome and in China for your first time, navigating the city might pose a challenge as many familiar apps such as Google Maps or Google Translate aren't available due to yeah, let's not get into that. Welcome to Guangzhou Bayun International Airport. Established in 2004, this behemoth of an airport ranks as the 12th largest globally by passenger volume, welcoming over 60 million travelers each year. With 70 airlines operating flights to more than 200 destinations, it exemplifies the scale and connectivity of a truly modern international gateway. In all its vastness, this airport is almost as big as your mama. So we just tried to get into the security area of the airport and then uh, he told us that Air Asia leaves from Terminal 1, not Terminal 2, despite Terminal 2 being mentioned on the ticket. Um, so we have to take the metro now and uh, head over to Terminal 1 and uh, try our luck again. The lady at the information counter advises us to take the complimentary shuttle bus instead of the metro, which she passed just in front of the terminal. And that, dear viewers, is precisely where shit started to go wrong. We waited at a bus stop for the terminal shuttle. A bus arrives, and along with other travelers with suitcases, we board, and blissfully unaware, we set off. After a while, as we leave the airport grounds, I think, no cause for alarm, it happens at other airports, yet, as we continue further and further afield, I start to realize that something must have gone terribly wrong. I already envisioned myself sewing socks for the rest of my days as we are eventually entering some kind of an industrial area. Attempts to converse with our fellow passengers prove fruitless. They all appear to know one another, yet speak not a word of English. At last, we arrive at the neighborhood in the middle of nowhere and I begin to suspect that this indeed is not Guangzhou Airport. The fun thing is that we already exchanged our money back at the airport and didn't have anything left on our Alipay, unable to recharge it. But stranded at our wit's end, we eventually find someone who speaks a few words of English, who then finds another with slightly better English, who finds yet another at the nearby guest house, where we secure the same transport back to the airport. Made it. 
So, um, yeah. Welcome to Guangzhou Bayun International Airport. Established in 2004, this behemoth of an airport ranks as the 12th largest globally by passenger volume, welcoming over 60 million travel. Somehow, I feel like we did this part already. But compared to the other terminal, this one looks slightly older and more run through. Like your mama. Anyway, the whole ordeal wasn't the fault of Philippine Air Asia, but on the other hand, thanks to them putting the wrong terminal on the ticket, we almost got the opportunity to start a career as sock sewers. We lost quite a bit of time on that unplanned city tour. Thankfully, we had checked in online on AirAsia's website the previous day and received an electronic boarding pass, sparing us the need to head to the ticket counter. Or so we thought. We had time to enter the security area, only to be turned away and informed that we need a printed boarding pass. This comes as a bit of a surprise, because I think I haven't seen a single scrap of paper during my time in China. Everything is handled digitally. At times, it's actually rather challenging to find a place that accepts cash or credit card, as most people simply pay with their phones or even by scanning their hands or faces. Anyway, quite a crowd gathers around the entry of the security area, all seemingly rejected for not having a paper boarding pass or, I imagine, for overweight baggage, so we turn back and then encounter our second ordeal. Suddenly half a dozen individuals approach us at once, each keen to assist with our check-in. Claiming to work for the airport, they encircle us, taking hold of our arms and attempting to lead us somewhere. It's all rather uncomfortable. They insist they merely wish to help. Yet the entire scene reeks of a scam. Though precisely to what, I have no idea. One particularly persistent individual simply won't relent, following us halfway across the terminal and I managed to record a short part of the conversation on my phone as we move along. But how can you check in for us? You're just like a... Yeah, we take you, we take you photo. Yes. We send to them. Once you get there, they will see you and you will go. Just like this. Just like this. But you, you don't work here, right? We walk here. See, this is someone... My, another person is moving. Yeah, we walk here. Yeah, no, so we, we, we make you go, just believe. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah, it's okay, we can pay. Yeah. Thank you for some money to make you go. Huh? Thank you for some No, because I don't, you, you cannot explain me how you can do it. So see, 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 see how you can do it now. You snap your picture yeah. and, and send to this. Uh, no, no, it's okay, pass. we go there, it's okay. No, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than placing our trust in those fellows, we proceed directly to the Philippine Air Asia check in counters. There, we receive our paper tickets from a gracious agent. Contrary to what those other individuals implied, the paper ticket is entirely free of charge. And although we have 70 kg of baggage, over the 12 kg allowance, no one mentions a word. And with everything sorted, we make our way to the security area once again. So there is the A boarding area and the B boarding area, but on the ticket it says Terminal uh, 2. So, uh, yeah. We cannot uh, rely on the ticket anyway, so just try our luck here and try our luck there, and somehow we will get to Manila. At 4:30. While Philippine AirAsia's punctuality has seen some improvement in recent times, the average delay remains about 74 minutes. So with today's delay of one hour and ten minutes, we are quite fittingly on par with the usual. Meanwhile, we take this opportunity to explore the airport's priority pass lounge. This shouldn't be a lounge review, but it's cozy, which is important, because we will stay there longer than we had anticipated, because further delays of our Philippine Air Asia flight down to Manila are announced. While a buffet is one of my favorite things in the world, right now I would prefer a bed. But sleep is overrated anyway, a cigarette would be nice too. I find it funny how there are smoker lounges everywhere, but they take away all your lighters at security control. Like, am I supposed to make fire with fucking stones or what? <laughs> at least we have some time for a bit of plane spotting. Aside from Philippine Eurasia, which incidentally has yet to make its appearance, there's Thai AirAsia and Malaysia AirAsia operating here as well. China Southern Airlines, using Guangzhou as its hub, is also present, alongside with some rather unexpected visitors, such as Air Tanzania, Egypt Air, 
Iraqi Airways, Air Serbia, Myanmar Airways International, Iran's Mahan Air and Taiwan's Eva Air. I've flown with quite a few of these, including Air Serbia, Myanmar Airways International and Mahan Air. So if you fancy watching a down-to-earth traveler explore some lesser-known airlines, do feel free to check out my other videos. Finally, well past our scheduled departure time, our A320, destined for Manila this morning, makes its long-awaited arrival. Welcome aboard this Philippine Air Asia A320, which shall be taking us down to Manila. The free free all economy cabin presents a rather respectable impression. As with all Air Asia affiliates, Philippine Airlines operates as a low cost carrier, meaning no added frills or extras. However, one is rewarded with quite reasonable fares. But before we explore further, let us prepare for takeoff and finally head southeastward. Welcome aboard Air Asia Flight Z2139, bound for Manila, we're all set. Apologies for the delay and we thank you for your patience. Philippine AirAsia's Airbus A320 is configured with a seating arrangement for 180 passengers, all in economy class. Seats offer a pitch between 71 and 74 cm and a width of 43 cm, which is undeniably snug. However, for affordable short-haul flights, it is perfectly acceptable. We are not reviewing Emirates First Class here, so I find the most crucial elements are cleanliness and reliability, which encompass reasonable fares, punctuality and safety. Regarding ticket prices, I cannot comment extensively. As I understand, they have recently ceased operations on this route. However, AirAsia is generally renowned for its remarkably low fares. As for cleanliness, there is no cause for complaint. The tray tables and other surfaces are spotless. Though I opt not to order anything on this flight, one would of course have the option to purchase food and beverages on board. Duty-free items are also available, including accessories, perfumes, spirits, but notably no tobacco. The menu itself allows one to pre-book meals or purchase snacks on board. They also offer soft drinks such as Coca-Cola, Sprite and beer. Though for the latter, there is a two-can maximum per passenger. And frankly, I find this restriction rather amusing, especially as these are the baby cans. Like those beer cans that our parents used to pack with our preschool lunches, rather than the standard 0.5 liter cans. And I swear, if you are wasted to a point that you become a problem to the comfort and safety of those around you after drinking two of those, I think there should be no way you are allowed on the plane without your legal guardian. My, my seven-year-old niece could handle more. Uh, but I digress once more. Sooner than I'd prefer, the sun begins to rise and the amount of sleep I get that night, when rounded to a whole number and expressed as a percentage of the whole day, is precisely zero. Reflecting, I realize I've rather rambled on in this video, and perhaps not quite enough about Philippine Eurasia, but truly there's not much to say on such a flight. It's essentially like riding a bus from point A to point B with no additional frills. Yet that precisely is what AirAsia embodies, and I love it. I've had my share of experiences with them, some delightful, others less so, but the fact remains if one simply wishes to travel from point A to point B across nearly any part of Southeast Asia, AirAsia is precisely what you're after, and their Philippine affiliate is no exception. Expect delays and uneventful flights rather than the same true treatment, but in the end you'll find you've paid considerably less than with most other carriers, therefore some might even say that AirAsia is the Ryanair of Southeast Asia. That said, AirAsia doesn't have a Chinese affiliate, so if you're curious about China's answer to Ryanair, simply click here. 
Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.